Andarki Namaskaram, Na Peru Harshibar, and I am an Indian American. All right, so since starting my YouTube channel, I think almost two years ago now, I have gotten so many questions about my Indianness, about where I grew up, where I'm from, where my family is from, what languages we speak. And that makes sense. I myself have seen so many different representations of Indian Americans in media, from American TV shows to Indian movies. Some of them are spot on, but others, not so much. So I thought it would be interesting to give my perspective on growing up Indian American. So in today's video, I'll answer all of your questions. I'll first start off with a quick bio and then share some of my stories and the experiences that led me to become the person that I am today, the modern day Lakshmi Manchu. And quick shout out to today's sponsor, Storyblocks. We'll get back to them in a little bit, but first let's get on to the video. Okay, before we start, let me just give you a quick recap of my life. So I was born and raised in the US, but my parents actually immigrated here from South India in the mid 1990s. They actually both grew up in the same coastal town in a Southern state called Andhra Pradesh. They studied in cities like Hyderabad and Bangalore before getting married and moving over here to start their lives together. So when my parents were living in India, they spoke Telugu, which is our mother tongue but they also did learn English in middle school and high school. And by the time they moved to the US and had me and my younger brother, we were exposed to both Telugu and English at home. So yeah, that's a quick glimpse of my early childhood. And growing up, I've always felt confused about not being Indian or American enough. At 25 years old, I am still figuring that out. But yeah, this is my story of how I learned to embrace my identity as an Indian American. Now, before getting into my story, I wanted to quickly shout out Storyblocks, which is a lovely sponsor of today's video. Storyblocks helps bring your stories to life with stock video, music, sound effects, even an easy to use online video editor. And with this video and pretty much every video on my channel, I use a lot of stock footage to better tell my story without having to scour the internet for hours to find that perfect clip. I also love how Storyblocks is investing in diverse creators to curate stock media that reflects the world today through their Restock initiative. They're developing so much new content to authentically represent the lives of everyone, including the LGBTQI plus and BIPOC communities. So yeah, there is just so much to love. So pick a subscription that works for you and you can get access to unlimited royalty-free video or audio content to spice up your YouTube videos. So use my link in the description down below to try out Storyblocks if you have haven't already. And thank you again Storyblocks for your continued support. Now back to the video. Now we moved around a lot when I was a kid. We spent three years in Florida and then another three years in Chicago or Chicago. But most of my childhood was spent in central Pennsylvania, aka the land of the Hershey chocolate factory and Amish country. So depending on my luck, I'd leave school every day to the scent of either chocolate or fresh manure. But besides that, I actually don't remember that much about my childhood. I didn't really have too many friends and at home, all I really remember was watching a lot of Disney Channel and Telugu movies. All in all, I think I was just confused about who I was and how I was supposed to fit into the world. And I think this is for two main reasons. First, we just didn't really have that many Indian people or activities around us. For comparison, when we lived in Chicago, it was like Desi Central. I remember our school district was super diverse and so I didn't really have any trouble making friends. And a lot of our family friends also lived there at the time, so I just have so many memories of visiting uncle's house to watch the latest Telugu movie or visiting the temple to load up on all of the different prasadam or sweets. But in Pennsylvania, it was different. Anything remotely Indian, like classical dance lessons or Telugu school or even the nearest temple were all two or three hours away. And besides the yearly visits from my grandparents or the occasional reunion with my parents' friends, I just didn't really see that much of my culture around me as a kid. But that being said, things were pretty great at home. I remember waking up to a medley of the super bottom and the pressure cooker all at once. My dad would always rent out these Telugu DVDs online, and so every weekend we'd dig through this huge binder of DVDs to pick a new movie to watch. I think the only real regret that I have was not learning Telugu. 
I remember there was one evening in third or fourth grade when my parents made a decision to only speak English at home to improve their speaking skills. Of course, this worked out great for them, but it made it really easy for me to just abandon any efforts of learning Telugu. And second, I was just really quiet and shy in school, and so I didn't really make many friends. Whether it was true or not, I always felt like I stuck out like a sore thumb at school, that everyone just saw me as that awkward Indian girl who always tried harder in math class. In fact, I remember one day at recess, some classmates were sharing their middle names and they asked me what my middle name was. Now, let's just say my middle name is not as simple as Jessica or Karen. It has two separate words, each which represent different Hindu gods. And instead of just saying my name, I made this huge deal about it. I was like, oh, you know, it's really long and convoluted. I can't even pronounce it myself. You really just don't want to hear it. But looking back, I wish I wasn't so embarrassed about something as simple as my name. And now that I think about it, my friends probably actually thought it was pretty cool that I was Indian. They'd always love trying my mom's idli and chutney during sleepovers, and we'd have fashion shows with my Indian clothes. So yeah, maybe I was just a really awkward kid and that's why I didn't have any friends in elementary school. Now, once I got older, two things changed. First, we moved to Boston and I started attending a boarding school. Now, my high school experience was transformative in many, many ways, but I think mostly it really helped me embrace my identity and who I was as a person. For the first time, I was surrounded by so much diversity. I had classmates from Alaska to Guam, from Morocco to Mumbai. I finally felt like I fit in, that there wasn't really that much different about me. And I also became super involved in the Indian scene on campus. We had an Indian club, a Hindu club, a Bollywood club, and I just signed up for them all. I was finally so proud of the fact that I was Indian and I wanted to share that with as many people as possible. And because I still didn't have that many friends, I spent my Saturday nights catching up on all the different Bollywood movies that I missed out on as a kid. I'd stay up late binging Superwoman videos, shocked by the idea that I wasn't alone in my struggles and challenges as an Indian American. And around this time, my parents also got their green cards, which amongst other things also meant that we could visit India a lot more often. On one hand, I loved these trips. It felt so comfortable being around people who looked like me, who ate the same food and watched the same shows. But at the same time, because I couldn't speak Telugu, I never really grew close to my extended family. And as a result, I kept hearing that I wasn't Indian enough. To my family, I was just the American girl. And let me tell you, that was really confusing. Up till then, I'd always struggled with feeling inadequate, not being American enough for my friends in the US, but not Indian enough for my family in India. But by the time I started college, I was finally able to find that balance. In fact, I was so happy that I could pull from the best of both worlds, that I could watch friends on a Friday night while ordering South Indian takeout, that I could go out for garba with my friends and have Taco Bell afterwards. We get up closer. Okay. Okay, transitioning to now. I think the biggest thing I've realized is that now that I live on my own, it's up to me to stay in touch with my South Indian roots. At home, it was a lot easier to just tag along with my parents to the temple or stand around as my mom made dosa. But now, I have to be a lot more intentional about how I spend my time. And for me, that's really taken shape in three ways. First, I've come to love cooking. When I lived in SF, I'd break a sweat making one chicken curry, but now every week, I only really cook Indian food for dinner. Everything from my mom's classics to a funky dish that I found on YouTube. And uh, most of this time is spent texting my parents, asking them how to fix my many cooking mistakes. And actually, along the way, I discovered a lot of Telugu YouTube videos, which besides helping me learn to cook authentic on their food, have also helped teach me Telugu vocabulary. And I still watch a ton of Indian movies. And nowadays, I always have something on my watch list, which right now includes this anthology series with my childhood heartthrob, Siddharth. Because for me, Indian movies have always been that one thing that made me feel closest to my culture. Because despite often feeling quite disconnected from India, movies helped transport me to worlds where I could skip around a village with my cattle, or study engineering in Hyderabad, or casually bump into my Prince Charming. And 
Lastly, I am ashamed to say that, especially since leaving home, my Telugu skills have weakened. Now, my comprehension skills are still pretty good, but if you've seen my Telugu Day in the Life series, my spoken Telugu could use some work. So yeah, for those Telugu people out there, if you have any suggestions for books or online courses or even tutoring services for me to improve my Telugu, please let me know because I really want to learn. And yeah, that is it for today's video. I know it's been, I think, three weeks since I... Now, it has been, I think, three weeks since I made my last video. So I am sorry for the delay and I'm really happy that you're still here. And if you did enjoy this video, please give it a big like and subscribe. Follow me on social media if you want to. And thank you again, Storyblocks, for sponsoring today's video. And I will see you in the next one.